Thursday was the Dylan Carlson game. He might not have started, but he had a huge impact, and he's going to be a key in this team if they're trying to get back on track and find themselves back in the playoff hunt. The bullpen also showing out once again, plus a big series coming up against the Phillies. It's a it's getting closer and closer to the trade deadline, closer and closer to the all-star break. Stay locked on Cardinals. Kind of a good show for you today. Friday, July the 8th, I am Lucas Smith along with J.D. Haffron. Happy Friday, everybody. A little bit of a happy Friday with the Cardinal win yesterday. Losing streak snapped, trying to get back on the right track. It's a, it's a victory Friday, Lucas. A victory <laughs> Friday is what we're calling it. As uh, the extra inning victory last night over Atlanta. Had to feel good for the guys. And uh, I, a quote that came to mind, I'm a, I'm a big uh, baseball movie guy. So uh, yes. I love winning. You know what I'm saying? It's like better than losing. Nuke Lelouch style from... Uh, <laughs> From Bull Durham, man, it's uh, yes. it feels way better. I was starting to think it was me, dude. I was starting to think it was me since I I joined I joined this podcast with you, and they hadn't won a game yet. Okay, so now the the, the curse is over. Moving on. To, to borrow a Cub term, you're you're not the goat. You're not you're not the Billy Goat <laughs> that's causing forty years of losing. So that's a good thing. So uh, once again, happy Friday. This this episode is brought to you by Sports Card Investor. If you haven't gotten the app yet, you're gonna love this. Uh, it's the new world of trading cards reimagined. Stay tuned to later in the show. JD and I will give you some more information on this wonderful app. It's a new tool for collectors, or if you're just trying to get into it as well, you're going to want to check out the Sports Card Investor app. So stay tuned for that just a little bit later on in the show. But he might not have started yesterday, JD, but Dylan Carlson had Ooh. himself a day. I, you can start with the hitting, but I want to start with the defense. How about that spectacular double play to end the ninth inning? At the time, saved the game, ended up saving the game in general. But, I mean, that is just one dandy of a play. Uh, we talked about it the other day. We were like how good he is in center field, which was his normal position coming up. But Harrison Bader, we know he's a gold glover in center, so he doesn't get to play there all that often. But we know he can do things like this. And uh, when that ball came off the bat, I was like, oh, man, here we yeah. go again. And then full dead sprint makes the catch, and then to have the wherewithal to spin, toss it in, hits his cutoff man. For those of you who uh, are, are, are basic, you know, what the fundamentals of baseball, hit your cutoff man is a big deal. Your coach will always preach on that. And yeah. uh, they get, they turn the double play, saves the game, and uh, they go on to, to, to win it later on. I think that that's that the key you brought up of having the, the, the knowledge and the wherewithal to go to, to not give up on the play. Like sometimes younger guys can just make the great catch and that's it. But no, you, he knew that at least he had a chance to double up the runner, uh, Gonsolin, who I believe was a pinch runner as well. So that's a double negative for him to have the bad base running after being brought in to run. But I mean, that is just a momentum type play because the, the Braves the, tie the game in the seventh. The, the double plays that the Cardinals turned yesterday were phenomenal. That was the best one. I mean, the, the fundamental side of it, the athletic side of it was just huge. And I think that that played a, played a role in the Cardinals getting a run next inning. But it's not too often that you start the game on the bench and then you end up with three hits on the day, including an, uh, the game-winning RBI in the 11th inning. I think the big game of the big side of Carlson game that has improved, that that has that has shined even through his struggles, is his ability to hit left-handed pitching. He is dynamite from that right side. That's why we saw him later in the game, and I think it proved that that he needs to be starting against lefties, and he should probably get started more starting opportunities now now that he's getting on a roll a little bit yeah um I, I don't know if it was you and i they you know got his butt in gear because we were <laughs> talking about how he the other night he had three strikeouts and just mm -hmm. completely looked lost at the plate and then he shows out three hits and uh obviously we talked about the defensive play so uh a heck of a job by uh dylan carlson we also gotta remember too he's so young still yeah like he's not he's not a 28 year old 29 year old player like he's 24 like 24 years old man he's uh, he's just getting started so we got to have a little bit of patience with these young guys but obviously he's got a bright future yes and, and to, to that point as well his first year was 2020 COVID year so that had to just yeah. be 
a bizarre it was a bar, bizarre year for everybody but especially to come up to start your major league career in that in that atmosphere not ideal right but Carlson it was you could argue it was a Dylan Carlson game you could also argue it was the game of the bullpen as the only men who gave up run, who gave up runs were the two guys that have been dynamite all year in Gallegos and Helsley but you go from Hicks bullpen de- debut after getting off of injury you saw Fernandez Packy Naughton finish it up Helsley going two plus even though he gave up the unearned run in the in the uh 10th inning, bullpen was dynamite th- last night. Yeah, they, they've they been really, really good recently. And uh, even the home run ball that Gallegos gives up, uh, we were texting each other. It wasn't really a bad pitch. It was a high fastball. It was out of the zone. Uh, and I'm sure Giovanni would tell you that, you know, he might want to get that one a little bit higher. But still, you got to give credit to Harris, who, you know, hit the pitch, drove it over the wall in center field. Sometimes, sometimes the batter just wins. It happens. Yeah. Yeah, I think Harris was the one that hit the ball to Carlson as well. That yes. that could have been could have been an extra base hit or could have been gone if you know little things happened. But I'm going to focus a little bit. We're talking about Libertor because Libertor was dominant. He mm-hmm. started. He was pretty solid. Jordan Hicks got to see him come back. He Oof. made the MLB Instagram page. His stuff was filthy out of that bullpen. You could see him ramp it up. He wasn't sitting 97, 99. He was sitting 100, 103, even on a couple pitches. Yeah, uh, to say he was throwing heat was an understatement. He topped <laughs> out at a 103.8 uh, in that at bat against Marcelo Zuna, which is the fastest pitch registered this season in Major League Baseball. He beat Helsley, who uh, had 103.1, I think it was, earlier this season. So he looked smooth. He looked confident. He did walk one, but he strikes out three in two innings of shutout ball, and it was good to see him back on the mound for the Cardinals. Totally agree. I think that he is somebody that – I know the numbers don't necessarily always bear this out because he has been a little inconsistent in the bullpen, but just a just microcosm of last night, looks like he's more comfortable there. And he never really looked comfortable as a starter. you agree with that? I absolutely agree. Uh, as soon as his first outing, I was like, eh, I don't know if I want him in the start. Even when they made the announcement initially, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, man, I don't really like that whatsoever. Um, I, I, I like where he's only going to see batters once – maybe twice mm-hmm. in a game. Yeah. Like I, I just, his stuff is so nasty that I just think by the time you get around to seeing them pitch two or three times in a day against a, a, a batter that, you know, they kind of pick up on those things. But when this guy comes out throwing a one Oh three at you and you only get one shot at him, I think the odds of him being successful are better coming out of the bullpen. I agree. You also look at what junior Fernandez did. He gave up a walk mm-hmm. and a hit in his inning of, uh, there's two thirds of an inning of work, excuse me, but still in, yet to give up an earned run this year. He has turned his career around. This is somebody that I had given up on, for lack of a better phrase, and he has just proven me and just about everybody else wrong and say, hey, I'm still here to pitch. I, I got 100 miles an hour. I got some good stuff, and I, I can help this bullpen. And that is exactly what he has done. Marmol talked about it in his post game yesterday, saying that guys have stepped up to bridge the gap. Fernandez has stepped up. He talked about Naughton. He talked about um, talked about Hicks coming back as well. The bullpen now, all of a sudden, with with Hicks back and Fernandez performing, talked about Zach Thompson as well. The bullpen is a little bit lengthier right now. The bullpen is starting to become a, more of a strength for this team rather than a question mark. You know, I'm not going to get ahead of ourselves here after just one game, but you can see where this bullpen is trending in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you get Hicks back from the from the injury, and then uh, yeah, Junior Fernandez. He's twenty five years old too. This is another guy <laughs> that we you know we saw a couple of years ago, and then like you mentioned, like he kind of like vanished. He just wasn't on the radar anymore, and then boom, he's back and he's throwing strikes, and that's the most important thing for him. Is he he always tended to be a little bit wild and would be outside of the zone, and people wouldn't chase anything, and he was having issues. Well. Now he's figured it out. Uh, I don't know whether it's the arm slot. I don't know what he he did, but keep doing it, Junior, because you look good out there. And, uh, again, yeah, you mentioned your boy Packy Naughton doing his thing yesterday. (laughs) He looks great from the left side. Uh, You know, a week or two ago we're talking about, okay, we need bullpen pieces to kind of bridge the gap between the big three and the starter. Not so much of a concern right now, and it's kind of nice to not have to worry about that. It is, yes. And like I said, we don't want to go back and forth that if all of a sudden the bullpen gives up three runs tonight that we say the bullpen is the worst in baseball, right? <laughs> but we, we, we do acknowledge that, you know, if they make a move for the bullpen, it would not be the worst thing, right? There's probably still some holes in there. You can make an argument. Uh, still some unproven pieces with Thompson and Fernandez, how long are these things going to last? But I think you and I are on the same page where this bullpen is trending in the right direction. And before we move on from this game, I want to talk about Matthew Libertor. 
pulled after only 74 pitches. He only threw 41 strikes. He did walk three. But I want to focus on just one inning in his outing, and that was the fourth inning. Okay, you, you go to the bottom of the fourth inning, leadoff walk, Marcelo Zuna with a double. So he got second and third, nobody out. What does he do? He strikes a batter out. He grounds out with the infield in so the runner stays put and then grounds out Harris stay in the inning. That inning right there was the most impressive inning he has thrown all season long. Yeah, and you could see, you could almost see, I should say, the weight just come off of his shoulders where he was in a pinch and he's like, oh my gosh, this is going to happen again to me again. You know, I'm, 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 oh no, I can't. He works his way out of it, allows his defense to do their job, and which is I keep saying it over and over. You throw strikes, and then more times than not, this defense is going to bail you. And you're you're, you're going to if you hit it near somebody, they're probably going to make the play. That's how good they are. Trust your defense and uh, just make smart pitches. And he he worked his way out of it. It looked great, and it just was really nice to see him have that bit of success right there to uh, help the team. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you even saw a couple of double plays turned on the infield really well with Gorman at second. You saw Sosa make that spitting yep. throw as well at a shortstop. So even when you might not have the A lineup out there, the A, because let's be honest, that, that lineup to start the game was not the A lineup. And that's okay. Mm-hmm. That You know, you need guys to give days off. But even with that B lineup, the defense was solid. You, yeah. I, mean, I totally agree with your point. And I was happy for Libertor to, to end his start on a high note. Uh, yeah. with, with, you know, maybe you'd like to see him go, go a fifth inning, maybe. But also you don't want to push the envelope, tie game, get your bullpen in there and, and go from there. But big-time series this weekend with the Philadelphia Phillies. Big-time series. Playoff implications galore here in July. Before we get there, I want to, want to tell you about today's title sponsor. J.D., this is an awesome, awesome app. It's the Sports Card Investor app. You're welcome to the world of sports cards, but it's reimagined. The Sports Card Investor app is the hobby's most powerful resource. You can quickly check the value of your favorite sports cards for great deals and profit from the hobby that you love or that you loved as a kid. Available completely for free in the Google Play or Apple app stores, the Sports Card Investor app is a must-have for baseball fans everywhere. You can browse over 630,000 cards. That's right. Whether you're wanting a prospect, maybe you're thinking, Ivan Pereira is going to figure it out. I'll get his card. Or you want a Libertor card. Check the value of those prospects every day. Maybe you're like JD. Maybe you want to look at a Jim Edmonds card or somebody from, from, the, from the 90s. <laughs> I'm not going to go far as the 80s, but maybe you want somebody from the 80s or 90s and you want to check with those nostalgia cards. You can check those as well. JD, we were talking a little bit. You you used to be into sports cards, yeah? Oh, when I was a kid, that was that was life, man. You, you go down to the to the store, grab yourself a pack, get, get that really awful gum out of the inside of it <laughs> and try to chew it. Uh, but you know, it was always a lot of fun trying to try to build your favorite team together. You try to get the whole Cardinals line up, but you're also trying to get some of your favorite players that are coming up. I remember people trying to pull for that King Griffey Jr. upper deck card back in the day. My little brother ended up getting one and I, I, I swear I, I almost murdered him. I almost murdered him. <laughs> I'm so jealous. And, uh, but it, you know, that's the fun of it, man. You never know what you're going to get. And, uh, with this app though, I mean, it's right there at your fingertips. You don't have to ride your bike down to the store to get the packs. You can do it right there online. Nope, there, there's there's no travel, there's no bad gum either. So download the Sports <laughs> Card Investor app today, available for free in the Google Play and Apple App Stores, or you can go to sportscardinvestor.com slash locked on. That is sportscardinvestor.com slash locked on. Big time series with the Philadelphia Phillies this weekend, especially after the weekend of, of the bad series last weekend against the Phillies. This, this weekend is a four-game set, the all-too-rare Friday to Monday for a game set. And coming into play, the Cardinals currently sit at 45 and 40. The Phillies at 44 and 39. Uh, they are 0.01 percentage points ahead of the Cardinals in winning percentage, but tied for that third wild card spot. So you could see a split and they, the two teams stay even, but this weekend will have major implications as to who makes or who will be in position for the wild card spot heading into the All Star break. You really can't overemphasize the meaning of this series. Yeah, it's going to be a, a big one. Uh, you just saw these guys, so you, the the familiarity uh, against their pitching staff is something that will be good. You know, that's always always nice to, to come back and face a lot of the same uh, same arms. Uh, but you mentioned two and five on the road trip, uh, still two and a half back in the central. But you're back home. You got the home cooking where they're uh, 24 and 16, and then you got the Phillies who don't have Bryce Harper right now. So that that's a, a good thing uh, in your ballpark this weekend as, uh, as you battle for this third wild card spot. Uh, Starting off tonight, man, it's going to be a it should be a pretty good pitching matchup. They've got their a Zach Wheeler on the mound uh, against uh, old old Uncle Charlie tonight and Adam Wainwright. 
Uncle Charlie Wainwright got hit around a little bit towards the tail end of his start on Sunday. This is actually a rematch pitching-wise of that Sunday night baseball game. Uh, and in that start, uh, like I said, Wainwright got hit around a little bit late. He goes five and two-thirds, four earned, gives up five, or strikes out five. Zach Wheeler had a little bit better of a night. He goes seven innings, four hits, a walk, five punch-outs. Hopefully, you, you look for reverse trends. That The second time around against Wheeler is successful, and Wainwright fixed his mistakes I don't think we've had the pleasure of discussing this phrase that I use a lot, J.D., but with Wainwright, I tend to not bet against him, and I really don't bet against him at home. So with him starting tonight, 7-15, I think Wainwright turns things around. I'm not saying he goes nine shutout baseball, but I think he goes six, seven strong, gives up less than three earned runs. I think he turns in a good start tonight. I really do. I got good confidence in Wainwright tonight. Yeah, you know, you get the uh, extra innings, the big win last night uh, over the Braves, so you get the happy flight, which is always nice when you're when you're heading home. And then uh, you, you got Adam on the on the mound tonight, and as you mentioned, you don't really bet against him, especially at home. I mean, he's just a great pitcher when he when he's on the mound at Bush. So uh, tough lineup, obviously, even without Bryce Harper with Schwarber and Hoskins and our old friend Castellano. So uh, it's still a good lineup, uh, but it, it should be a lot of fun this weekend where you get uh, four games against the Phillies at home. On Saturday, you see the pitcher that gave up the historic four home runs in a row in Kyle Gibson. So you know that'll be the storyline as soon as Paul Goldschmidt comes to the plate <laughs> on Saturday afternoon. But for Saturday, I want to talk about the Cardinal pitcher in Dakota Hudson. 6-5, and 4-2-9 ERA. The ERA has gone up and up and up. And I think for me, that was one of the more defending factors I could give Hudson. He said, yeah, he's not going very deep, but he's not giving up very many runs. Well, now he's not going deep, and he's giving up plenty of runs. When you look at his last seven starts, only 39 innings pitched, 39.1. And he's given up, or his ERA sets at 5-4-9. Last time out against the Braves, four innings, nine hits, six earned. He gave up three earned against the Marlins in five innings in his part before that. You go back one more, five earned and four and a third. Not to say that this is a make or break start for Hudson, but you got to start seeing some signs of positivity. We saw it a little bit earlier, a little bit in April and May, but now you got to start seeing more of it. I'm really, really going to be keying in on his start on Saturday. Yeah, uh, patience is starting to run a little bit thin with Dakota when uh, you're not throwing strikes. You know, he's uh, he's got the stuff, too. That's what's so frustrating is he's got that good sinker. And with the defense behind you on the infield being as good as they are, you would think he's like a match yeah. made in heaven for this team. <laughs> and he just can't throw strikes, man. He's, he keeps walking people. So, um Again, I'll say it again. Trust your defense, dude. Just throw it over there. Let them hit it. If they put it over the wall, so be it. But let your defense be your best friend behind you and just get it over the plate. And I, I would imagine more times than not, good things will happen for Dakota Hudson. Especially with this with this defense. We're, we're going to beat this point dead. This team with the defense you have, you cannot be afraid to, to throw strikes. You just, and the, Everybody on the staff, except for maybe Wainwright, but he's a different breed, has the stuff to survive over the plate, in my opinion. You know, yeah. you can survive pitching at the knees just a little bit. Like, you can survive it and get the ground ball that you need. Sunday's start brings an interesting one because Andre Pallante gets a chance to rebound. You mentioned to me that Wainwright said that they might have found what was wrong in Pallante's season and career worst start earlier this week. Yeah, he was uh, doing an interview and uh, was talking with uh, Carriker and Smallman, and... Wainwright was it was it was funny because they were doing interview and he was out on the golf course uh, down in Georgia where they were playing against the Braves nice. and he's like well he kept putting them on hold he's like all right hold on a second I got to drive real quick and whatnot but he said That's that hysterical. they think Palante might have been tipping his pitches in that first inning because if you notice that was the bad inning and then the rest of the game not so bad he's like he could tell things got a little bit better for for the rookie than in, in the, the last next couple of innings so they think he might have been tipping things in that first inning. They got it figured out, and uh, he looked better after that. He, he looked better, so uh, I would expect more of the same from uh, Palante, who, who's who been a breath of fresh air with uh, his nasty stuff this year. Could not agree anymore. I think that baseball, too, is a game of adjustments, right? How do you yeah. adjust from what you, you know, from, from the bad parts of your, of your last start? And you, you know, even Chris Carpenter, I remember, for whatever reason, your brain remembers silly things. I remember... I want to say it was either game two or game five of the National League Division Series in 2011 against the Phillies that one of Tim McCarver's keys to the game was for Carpenter not to tip his pitches because basically when he was throwing a breaking ball or a fastball, his gloves set up and his stretch would be different. That's like one of the weird things that I just remember about that series. So my point being, even one of the great ones like Chris Carpenter went through a sign of tipping pitches. And you remember Wainwright also caught John Smoltz tipping pitches in his short stint 
in the St. Louis, I think it was 2009. And then John Swartz goes out and strikes out nine Padres in a row or eight, whatever it was in that start. So Wainwright, if Wainwright says you're tipping pitches, you're probably tipping pitches. <laughs> you need to fix it. To finish up the, the talk on Philadelphia Phillies, or at least from the pitching standpoint, Aaron Nola, who has some filthy stuff, yeah. goes up against Miles Michaelis. These are, I mean, the, Aaron Nola's five and six, Miles Michaelis five and seven. These are probably two of the better under 500 pitchers you're going to see in baseball. And I think, you know, talking about this Sunday start or Monday start as well as in general, I think runs could be at a premium this weekend, even with the potency of the Phillies offense. Pitching matchups are exciting this weekend. You agree or disagree? No, I, I think it's I think it's fantastic. You've got arguably your two best pitchers going up against their two best pitchers. And then on uh, the games on Saturday and Sunday, you know, you got – uh, a lower degree of uh, pitching there with uh, Dakota and uh, who are they? Who are they play? Cal Gibson Sanchez. on uh, on Saturday, Gibson, and then yeah, yeah, right. and then Sanchez and Palante on Sunday. So it matches up really nicely where their best is against our best, and vice versa. So um, yeah, I just feel bad for Michaelis again. He's got yeah. <laughs> Nola to deal with, and uh, he's probably not going to get a lot of run support. But uh, you know, Miles Miles is Miles, and he'll be fine. So it, it should be a fun weekend at Bush. That it should be. We are just 10 days away from the All-Star break occurring. We're going to talk a little bit about what you can do to help the Cardinals for the All-Star break, as well as talk a little bit about some offensive points. And if you missed Twitter, everybody, I do have some news to share in segment number three. So all that coming up here in just a moment. But first, JD might not know this yet, but Built Bar is one of the best tasting protein bars on the market. And we have a new flavor to tell you about. It is Coconut Brownie Chunk Puff. So from the people who invented healthy and tasty comes the gift to you of your taste buds. You've probably tried the most amazing. If you haven't tried this yet, you need to try it. The Coconut Brownie Chocolate Puff. That's right. The Coconut Brownie Chunk Bar is a flavor you will fall in love with. It's a delicious, chewy marshmallow covered in 100% chocolate. My mouth is watering right now as I speak. It's like a fluffy cloud of coconut brownie goodness. But stop drooling and listen. They're good for you as well. Low calorie, low sugar, high protein, and 100% delicious coconut brownie chunk puffs are only here for a limited time. So don't be afraid to go get them now at built.com. Make sure you do not miss out on this incredible flavor. They're going fast, but they taste amazing. All built bars are made with collagen protein with your favorite which is what your body loves and what they absorb more effectively and provides a ton of health benefits and it's something that tastes good and is good for you. Be sure to go to built.com right now. Delicious coconut rich chocolate, and incredible marshmallow filling. What could be better than a Bilt Bar? So use the code LOCKED15, L-O-C-K-E-D-1-5 at checkout for 15% off your order. How great is this? You get something that tastes amazing, that's really good for you, and you can save 15%. 50% off your order with promo code LOCKED15 at Bilt.com. All-Star Game is getting close, J.D., and we are probably just a couple days away from finding out who the starters are. Goldschmidt and R&R, we're going to start with this uh, conversation because Goldschmidt, I think, has first base on lock. Complete lockdown. And then you got Nolan Arenado at third base. Yeah. Uh, today, actually, on Friday, is the last day to vote for the starters. So uh, mm-hmm. Goldschmidt's got a, a healthy lead over Pete Alonzo of the Mets. But you, you never know. You got you know how many people live in New York and are, might race online at MLB.com and start voting for him. So True. if you haven't voted yet for Goldie, make sure you do so. Obviously, very deserving of being the starter. And then it's uh, Manny Machado from the Padres over at third base against Nolan Arenado. Uh, they're neck and neck, dude. Like, it's like, I think this morning I looked up 50-50. Like, they're right yeah. there next to each other. Um, you got to get Nolan in, man. Okay? Right. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are we doing, Cardinal Nation? Let's go. Get online and vote MLB.com and uh, get the starters in there. Uh, we want to see Arenado and Goldie at the corners for the National League in L.A. for the All-Star game. I t- could not agree more. Remember last time Manny was a Dodger and he uh, the NLCS and he dragged his foot and kicked Jesus Aguilar's back, uh, foot on the first base bag in 2018, I think. We don't want that Manny Machado starting no. at third base in, no. in, in L.A. Come on. I know no. Javier Reyes of Locked on Padres is probably losing his mind right now, but <laughs> Nolan Arenado deserves to be a starting third baseman. And how cool would it be to see Cardinals at the corners? Yeah. I mean, that's a marketing slogan right there. Cardinals <laughs> at the corners. Come on. I just came up with that at the top of my head. 
Yeah, Lucas, copyright that. Write that down. Make sure nobody <laughs> steals it from you. Got it right now. <laughs> I'm gonna send. I'm gonna email this to the Cardinals right now and say that hey, you can use this, but I want. I want to cut. I want to exactly. Cut. <laughs> we'll get some T-shirts made. It's gonna. It's gonna be beautiful. It's gonna be beautiful. Absolutely. That'll be the hashtag as soon as it's announced. I'm tweeting it out because they're in their neck and neck. I was voting yesterday. I'll vote again tomorrow. Usually, I'm not like a homer. I try and vote just pretty, pretty straight up. But Goldie and Nolan are two fine choices at the hot corners for the St. Louis Cardinals. And talking about the offensive side of things for this weekend, as we kind of get back into it for just a little bit, it's going to be tough going up against it. But I think what the Cardinals can do, or the, the confidence they can have, is that they've seen Wither once in the last week. It's really hard to, for a pitcher, in my opinion, to go through an offense twice in a week and get the same result. Now, if you're the Corbin Burns of the world, you could face the Cardinals 10 times and shut them out eight times and only give up two runs the other two times. But I think that they can look back at that start and say, okay, what, what are we pulling off? What will this change up effective? Things of that nature. Hopefully the second time through against him and Gibson provide better results, especially with somebody like Carlson getting hot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, it, I don't know if any team does video better than the Cardinals do when they go back and find things that they need to adjust to and make changes to uh, the last time out, which is, you know, we mentioned that earlier where it's, it's kind of nice that they have to see the Phillies this close to when they played them last time because everything's yeah. very fresh in their minds. Uh, now, on the other side of it, same thing for the Phillies against the Cardinals pitching staff, but we're not going to talk about that portion. We're going to stay no, positive. No. We're talking about our offense. And, uh, you know, I, I, I would hope for better results, as you mentioned, than uh, the last time around, just because you just saw this a week ago. So uh, nothing should be surprising you this time around. I agree. And, and you're back home, too. That, that, mm -hmm. that, that's, the, that's the key thing as well. You got four against the Phillies at home, three against the Dodgers at home, and then three against the Reds. So hopefully you find a way to maybe play 500 ball against the Phillies and Dodgers. And that wouldn't be terrible. And then you sweep the poor old knees a little right. And you go to the all-star break with a little bit of momentum. And then I think another key here for this weekend is that there's a chance the Cardinals get O'Neal back. And yeah. there's a chance that they get Bader back before the all-star break. Bader's not coming back this weekend. But I think we, we talked about it a little bit yesterday how these two players are keys in the lineup or can be keys in the lineup. Absolutely. So getting O'Neal back healthy and hitting like he was last year, and even a little bit before he got hurt again, that could be huge for this team. Yeah, and it also takes Yepes out of having to play defense in the outfield, which <laughs> you do, I don't want to see it anymore. He's doing his best. It's not yeah. his thing, and I get it. It's it's not. I'm not trying to be negative towards him. He's just not a very good outfielder. That's not his position. So mm -hmm. he's doing what he can. But we mentioned yesterday when Carlson was in center in that one ball in right field, you're like, Carlson would have had that. No problem. We wouldn't have right. any issues there. So uh, it'll be nice to have two gold glovers back. And uh, eventually, hopefully soon, we get Yachty back, which I think will be nothing but a boost to the, not only the, the starting rotation, but the bullpen as well. Uh, we, we forget how important he is to calling a game, how smart he is behind home plate. Watching the Braves run the bases and steal bases left and right uh, against the Cardinals in the last few games, like that doesn't happen when, when Yadier Molina is behind the plate. So uh, hopefully they'll get him back soon as well, too. Because, uh, I mean, think about that. It's three starters that are missing from your everyday lineup. You're probably going to struggle when you're missing three big guys like that. Yeah. And also, maybe Yadi might not come back at 300 like he did in 2011. But yeah. you have to imagine he's going to put up better at-bats than we've seen from Herrera, Kisner, and Austin Romine as well. All due respect to all three of those. I think Herrera is going to be fine. Romine is what he is. Kisner as well. But mm -hmm. I agree with you that the intangible side of bringing Yachty or getting Yachty back is is bar none what, what is going to help this team. And yeah. that is exactly what this team needs right now is we get closer to the All-Star break. Maybe they don't want to rush him. Maybe you see him after the All-Star break, uh, the long road trip uh, after the All-Star break, uh, three at Cincinnati, two at Toronto, three at Washington before the Cardinals come home again. But – We'll have to wait and see what, what uh, Molina come, does bring back. And I think, regardless, it's going to be a fun weekend. And before we end the show, J.D., uh, for those who missed my announcement on Twitter and things of that nature, uh, just want to take, take just a moment of your time. that This is my last month at the Locked On Podcast Network, last month as a now co-host of the Locked On Cardinals show. Uh, I recently accepted a position at Washington University in St. Louis to be their manager of rec sports and varsity camp. So I was in campus rec all throughout college. Getting to go back into that field is something I'm very excited for. I am very sad to be leaving Locked On Cardinals podcast. I'm leaving it in great hands with JD over here, so don't fret, Locked On Cardinals listeners. Uh, but I just wanted to take a moment out of the show and say thank you to the listeners, to the watchers, to the people who interact, comment, like, agree, disagree with me. I, it's okay, too. It's been a joy the last close to two years. Um, I just 
Could not have imagined a better ride at, at the Locked On Podcast Network. It's not goodbye yet. Still got a, a month to go. Still got some baseball to cover. But I did want to make that announcement on the show today. So I appreciate JD giving me just a moment to do that. Uh, so just, just letting everybody know that this is my last month at the Locked On Podcast Network. Now, I will say this, Lucas. That doesn't mean you can't come back and do some guest <laughs> shows with me, right? I mean, we're, we're, we're just getting warmed up together. And then <laughs> you, you can't just leave me. So uh, hopefully we'll get you back on so we can uh, – continue to, to have good conversation about Cardinal baseball together. Absolutely. I will be a guest anytime that you need me to, but I am also very excited, everybody, for what JD is going to be doing with the show. So we'd be sure to be excited for that. So happy Friday, everybody. Made it to Friday. Hope you have a good weekend. Hope you, uh, you watch some the Cardinal baseball this weekend. Hopefully some Cardinal winners as well. Thank you for making Locked On Cardinals your first listen of the day. Go make Locked On MLB Prospects your second listen. Draft is coming up. I know nothing about prospects and the draft. I know nothing about the draft, so I've been listening to Locked On MLB Prospects every day to try and get myself knowledgeable about the upcoming draft. I encourage you to do the same. So, from JD, I'm Lucas. Thanks for listening. Be sure to stay safe, stay well, and have a fantastic rest of your day.